Hello everyone, this is Dapper Cthulhu and, sorry, welcome back to this let's play of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, last time we collected a bunch of stuff in preparation for this dungeon and this time we are going to be exploring the inside of Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. Now, I'm going to say up front that uh, last time... I made a comment about showing off Aurora's wind in this dungeon. Or in a dungeon. It will not be this dungeon. The reason being that this dungeon is short enough. I like how uh, when the camera goes underwater it muffles what you hear. But I, this dungeon is... Short enough, I won't need to do any warping. I'll probably have the whole dungeon uh, recorded in this episode. All those two Octo Rocks in there, and those bubbles were called Shabombs, I think. These jellyfish are electrified, they're called Beery. Um, that's the kind of enemies we're going to be dealing with in this dungeon. In this room, we meet... You! Who are you? I am Ruto, Princess of the Zoras. What? Are you saying my father asked you to come here to save me? I'd never ask anyone to do such a thing. Letter in a bottle? I have no idea what you're talking about. My father is worried about me? I don't care! <clears throat> anyway, I can't go home right now. And you, get out of here, understand? Brat. <coughs> oh no! And suddenly she turns into Joseph Joestar. Anybody understands the reference? So, what you want to do is you want to follow her into this hole. Yes, I just said that. Anyway, and you speak to her again. Are you still hanging around here? I told you to go away. I'm okay. I've been going inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly since I was little, but... Lord Jabu Jabu is very strange today. There are electrified jellyfish and strange holes around. On top of that, my precious stone was... But that's none of your business. Anyway, you, go home, now! Understand? Not worried about me? Then I will give you the honor of carrying me. However, I won't leave until I find the thing I'm looking for. You better believe me. Yeah, whatever. So, we want to go in here. More Shabons. Lovely. Use her as a weapon. These things cannot be affected by your slingshot. See? But, obviously, you can use her as a weapon. As, uh, evil and sadistic as that sounds. Now, she's fine. Despite being part of an aquatic race, she's fine in small and shallow water, but deeper water will cause her to drown, oddly enough. These are called stingers. They're flying stingrays that you can kill with two shots of your slingshot. Now I'm going to take these guys down, because they're going to be in the way otherwise. Then... Oh. I almost forgot hit him. Alright. This is a good time to mention that when you're swimming, 
you if you uh, mash the B button, it'll make you swim faster in this game. It does not work in Majora's Mask except for maybe the 3D remake. But in this game, if you mash B while you're swimming, it will make you swim faster. So, uh... Yeah. It's, uh... No tip for you. Blink. Not what I was trying to do. Yeah, you can use her to save ammo on your slingshot. Now. Basically works as like a pot or a box. Dr. Rock appears here. Now, there is a cave down there you can dive in. On the other side is a business scrub, as you can hear it. He sells Deku Nuts. <clears throat> I do not need Deku Nuts, so I'm not going to bother with him. Ah, shut up. Now, we're back up here, we go in this room, and we're back in the room with the holes. Now we're going to avoid falling in the holes and go through this door on the other end. Now that we have Rudo, we can actually complete this room, even though we haven't gone there yet. This switch, Navi will interrupt to tell us that this switch, uh, we can't do it with just our weight. Basically, we need to be stepping on it with Rudo while carrying Rudo. Let's uh, bring Rudo in here with us. There are some stingers in here. That's one. That's two. chest and I receive the boomerang. Now this item is fun. It's got multiple uses and I will show them to you all in this dungeon. But first things first, we gotta explore the rest of these rooms. These claws, Navi does not tell you their name if you if you uh, lock onto them, so I don't know what they're called. In this room, you need to use boomerang. Boomerang. Oh, excuse me. Now there is this red tail in here that you couldn't do anything with before. Because you need the boomerang you have to cut it once, cut it twice, cut it three times, and cut it off. That the there are two more of those tails in this dungeon. Each one takes four hits from the boomerang to destroy. In this room, you get the dungeon map for uh, killing the tail. So now we have that. And uh, now you see Rudo is standing. We will deal with that in just a minute. 
Navi interrupts to point out the red slimy thing is gone and suggests that it must be because we cut the red tail. Uh, yeah, I just said that. Boing fairy. Now these bubbles are a piece of cake. But the problem here is that we have a time limit. We have to be quick. That was quick. I didn't mean to take as much damage as I did, but that was quick. Now, this room was completely optional. I just came in here to uh, pick up the compass. Now that we have the compass, we can see where everything hidden in the dungeon is. I do not believe there are any more uh, chests in here, but just for the obligatory um, map look. Yeah, there aren't any more chests inside this dungeon. Now we're going to go back to the east side of this room got in that Far East room, and now this room is open. Inside is another tail. For three, and Alright, so we leave there, knowing that nothing else is going to pop up. Through here, I forgot to mention these things can now be killed by your boomerang, but only when they fully uh, come out of the ground. If you touch them uh, with anything that isn't long distance, you will get damaged. Alright, so those are out of the way. Let's go into here. There is another tail, but this one is is uh, guarded by four beauties. All we have to do is just... Alright. Use number two for the boomerang. Grabbing items from a distance. I missed that ruby. So the first two uses for the boomerang are to uh, basically a second slingshot without ammo for certain enemies. And the second use is to uh, pull items, pull pickup items from a distance. How do we got that done? Let's go get Rudo. That's what happens if you don't kill it with the uh, boomerang. How inconsiderate! How could you leave me behind? If you're a man, act like one. Take responsibility! No, 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 go away! What? Hey! How did that not work the first time? Anyway. Grab Rudo, and we're done in here. We don't have anything more to do in these rooms. We'll never see him again, so say goodbye to him. Now, we come back in here. As you can see, that big green tentacle that was plugging this hole was now gone. We drop into it. Those tentacles right there... Um, for anyone wondering. Not tentacles, those vines right there, for anyone wondering, will bring you back up to um, room above. But this is the main use of the boomerang outside of combat. It's grabbing these tokens from a distance. 
We're gonna we're gonna be finding a lot of use for that once we leave here. Now, in here. That's it! That's what I've been looking for! Throw me up there! Onto the platform! Didn't realize she was speaking for a minute. Alright, so you throw her up on there and... <clears throat> Princess Rudo got the spiritual stone, but why Princess Rudo? Oh my goodness! I finally found my mother's stone. I got very upset when Lord Jabu Jabu swallowed it. While I was feeding him, he suddenly swallowed me. I was so surprised I dropped it inside. But now that i found it, I don't need to be in here anymore. So, take me home, right now. Bossy little brat, isn't she? Uh, I don't think that was part of the plan. Ah, what is this, an octopus? I think you'd know what an octopus is if you saw one. I hate to have to be the one to tell you this, but, uh, that's not an octopus. This is a battle that, for me, either goes really, really well or really, really bad. As you see here, this is the primary use of the boomerang in combat. Stunning enemies. There are some enemies that... Uh, can be damaged or even killed by the boomerang, but most can only be stunned. And apparently, I'm not gonna say that yet. I might jinx it. That's another strategy for you if you uh, want a quicker and easier way is just take the hit and stun it when it turns around. I don't particularly like doing I don't particularly like doing that, but well if I have to. Doesn't matter now, I beat it. Alright, so I can go back through the door I came in, or I can climb up onto the platform that the Octo Rock came in through. See what's up here. Inside these pots, the two on either side have Deku Nuts in them, and the middle has, has a fairy in it. If you need to use those, I don't, so I'm gonna ignore them. Alright, and then I got that. In this room we have these platforms that, come on, we all know what they look like. I don't need to say it. We all see what they look like. We were all adolescent kids at one point, or maybe right now. We all see what they look like. The question is, how do you deal with them? Hit, hit him like that, and then jump across him. I'm not going to say any more about him. Now, in here, you just jump onto this platform, bring it down here, and uh, for anyone that doesn't remember this room, it's the one where we saw the first beauty, which was that jellyfish. It's the second room in the dungeon. <laughs> Just for reference on where we are. So, now that I've got that cleared up, where do we, where do we go from there? That platform will take us down to... Um, the room where we had to 
bring Princess Ruto up. And this, uh... This switch is a blue switch, which means that we need to place something on it to keep it down. And here, there are a bunch of beauty, which you know by now when you about them. So, at one point I was recording this game and I actually caught myself accidentally grabbing hearts out of the air in this room when trying to kill these things and I stupidly deleted the footage. I don't know why I did that. Because I'd never done that before and I wanted to keep the footage as proof that I did and I don't know why I deleted it. I just remembered it as I walked in here. But, we collected another gold Skulltula. Which means, I believe, that is... Yeah, that's all of them. We got one room we didn't go in, but since we have no more chests and no more Skulltulas to get, we got the item, we got the map and compass, we got all the Skulltulas, there's nothing in that room for us. So if you want to go in there and see what's in there for yourself, you can. But it's not going to be anything important. This switch, as you can see, you got to be standing in the exact right spot when you throw the boomerang. You have to throw the boomerang because this, this uh, webbing here, or whatever it is, is apparently made of steel and you can't cut it with your sword. And there's also some underneath the switch that you can't shoot through with your slingshot. But you saw how I did it. Now, as you see, on the other side of this door is a skull, which means it's boss time. Bioelectric anemone known as Baronade. Now, if there's any one piece of advice that I can give to help you more than anything else in this battle, it is do not stop moving. Keep moving through the whole battle no matter what you do. Do not ever hold still unless you're attacking like this. As long as you keep your feet moving around, you should be fine, and wait for an opening to attack with your boomerang. While those lightning, uh, while those lightning streams are active, you can't hit it. Once they go down, like right now, it's safe to throw the boomerang. You can't hit it. Hit it is fine, but you can't hit the baronade. You can't hit the Barony while it's under the ground like that. So you gotta attack the jellyfish. Now when they're when they're like this, you can actually hit the jellyfish with your sword. But I like hitting them with my boomerang because you know, why not? Alright, now. That's why you keep moving. I'm not doing nearly as well in this as I normally do. But, you know. Alright, here we go. Back in a few more times, and that's all she wrote. Another boss down, another dungeon in the bag, and... Her heart, heart container that we can collect. It's up to nine 
art containers. Now we just walk into the... You... You're late. What took you so long? You're useless. I, I was just lonely, that's all. Just a little. Yeah, sure. so I guess I'll reward you. Oh my. What do you want? Just tell me. Uh, I want that spiritual stone. You mean the spiritual stone of water, the Zora Sapphire, don't you? My mother gave it to me and said I should give it only to the man who will be my husband. I might call it the Zora's engagement ring. Alright. I'll give you my most precious possession, the Zora Sapphire. Obtain Zora's Sapphire. This is a spiritual stone of water passed down by the Zoras. Her most precious possession? You don't know what she's talking about. But you finally collected all three spiritual stones. Go back to Sea Princess Zelda. And we will. But not just yet. Don't tell my father. Yeah, we will go see Princess Zelda, but not just yet. First things first, there are a couple of things that I want to take care of now that we have the boomerang, but I will save that for the next episode. See you guys then.